Um, this was very much, part of this was very much to do with, with capitalism. And capitalism, of course, is, is the, the idea, really, um, that you're looking at some kind of surplus value that involves controlling the means of production, controlling whatever it is that, that's being produced, selling it on, employing people, but it also involves, if you're going to be doing this, you've got to have people who are working a certain way, who work certain hours, who understand what the rules are, who you, whom you can rely on, and this notion of rationality, this notion of control, this notion of, um, of people being in control and being able to do a job that, that it's been agreed you guys are going to supply the coffee beans, right? We can't have you going off on Datura because you're doing the coffee now, okay? So, so there's a whole uh, set of relations, a whole set of behaviours that start to come into play that previously were not nearly as prominent. Uh, and as a consequence, there's this rapid development of global trade. And so we have new markets, new commodities, and new consumers. And it's, it's what these people were doing, what they were consuming, that we start to look at. So, we've got these, um, these um, different substances here. And um, this is just consumption growing through the 18th century. And you can see that there's some massive uh, shifts here in terms of the amount of substances that, that people were using. I mean, tea is the one that really stands out, or, or actually, probably coffee, which is kind of interesting. I was thinking about this earlier today. I thought, well, you know, which of those is the, 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 the most powerful in terms of the magnitude of shift in this coffee? And coffee is actually really quite a strong of these drinks. Coffee is, to my way of thinking, maybe this is how I have my coffee, but, you know, it's, it's quite a strong, powerful substance, isn't it? You know, and, so, and it's interesting to me that, that um, there's this massive 60-fold increase in the amount that was being um, consumed in that, in that century. And it's worth noting that, okay, the population did grow over 100 years, and it grew by 50%, but the proportions of the substances that were <coughs> traded are massively out of, uh, out of proportion to that, to that population growth. But I think the point is that they did it so rapidly it wasn't just like, oh, yeah, we're going to take a thousand years to do this too. No, 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 we're going to do it in the next hundred years. Boom. And, and as we'll see, not only did they, they start to engage in trade with this, but they actually took it over and converted it into a, a cultural a form that was culturally palatable to them. They didn't want to trade. They, didn't, they, didn't, they started, initially they started trading with people, but as soon as they could, they actually, you know, grab some, some trees, whether it was coffee or, or coffee went to, to um, Indonesia. Um, uh, some of these substances went to um, uh, the Caribbean and so on. Um, that, that, that they wanted to control the means of production. And this is where the, this notion of capitalism comes in, where it becomes really pretty important. They wanted to have control over the whole process. East India Company, all that. East India Company, absolutely. The Dutch East India, the, the East India Company from, from England and so on. You know, they, they all wanted to they, they, yeah, they all wanted to um, to, to trade, um, but they wanted to control it themselves. That that was what was um, you know very important for them. It's a new consumer lifestyle embraced by all classes. So even people who who uh, who do who were who were poor people started to use these substances. Um, and if one of the reasons in relation to 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 the poorer people comes back to this idea of, well, you know, if you've got a substance that actually stops you feeling so hungry or so miserable, that's actually quite good. And so it's, so you can actually spend a small amount of money on that. Um, because, I mean, these, these amounts that we're talking about up here, I mean, they, these aren't just for the elites. This is everybody. Everybody got right into it. Actually, the, the word spirit is interesting. It comes from the Middle Ages, again, where, where it was a powerful intoxicant and people were as if they were almost possessed. And so this is where the idea of the spirit comes from, from the notion of having a spirit within you, a spirit within you. Alcohol is an Arab word, ironically, and it means the spirit, alcohol. Oh, really? I didn't realize that. Oh, cool. It's in the dictionary. Oh, great. Oh. Etymologies are great. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent.
the fruits of colonial expansion um, and the Europeanisation of foreign products. And so it was also a process of appropriation, um, development and definition. So they started to redefine these products and they started to use them in ways that, that Europeans felt, felt more comfortable with. They started to add sugar and milk, for example, and tea, which, which apparently, I, I didn't realise this, hadn't been used so much previously. Um, Certainly it's taken off in India, that's for sure. Um, but um, you can see there there's a range of, of um, processes that are uh, going on um, that began in the 16th century but that rapidly gathered momentum. Um, and they involved a redefinition of these products. And so this is this, what we were talking about before, the idea that everybody was using them. They were using them in their own ways. Um, <coughs> So, some of these substances uh, were also used um, as, as a medicine, like uh, tobacco, for example, was considered um, a, a useful uh, product and superior to some of the products that had previously been uh, uh, used, or, or the indigenous products. Um, and, and it was this transformation of the roles of plants and the relations between the natural world and Europeans during this period that was significant. They, people started to think differently about how they were using these substances. They weren't a random act or a ship of forms kind of scenario. It was much more about having a substance that you could use that allowed you to start working in the dark satanic mills. Having a substance that allowed you to continue your life, but in a way um, such that you were not inebriated. So there's a movement away, or I should say there's a movement towards sobriety and towards being in control. And this is very, I think this is very also an important thread. When we think about how we think about drugs today, we typically think about drugs being associated with discontrol, with people being out of control. Whereas these substances, which aren't really thought of as drugs, are about people being in control, about people having control of what they're doing and being able to continue to do what they want to do. Now, it is interesting, as I say, though, to think that, that when we think about tea and coffee and so on, we don't actually think about these as drugs, but they are. And, and they've got alkaloids in them, some of them are powerful. You know, as I've said, I personally find caffeine quite strong. I have one cup of coffee a day, that will be enough for me, otherwise I get a bit on edge. Um, and, 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 and it comes back to those, those comments um, you, know, you, you made earlier on, Paul, you know, in, in relation to, well, you know, do we really think about these things as, as being immoral? Isn't it really about health? You know, and so we've got these these kinds of things. They're, they are cloaked in economic and social and political realities, but at the same time, they are substances. They have an effect, and um, and these these were deep. These these of course become deeply embedded. I mean, is there anybody here who hasn't had a hot drink today? What we're talking about here is this the, the, the deeply embedded nature of our consumption of these substances, which, which is definitely psychotropic substances, and you know, they have these powerful effects on people, and they're, yeah, that's fascinating. And the rum trade is fascinating, mm -hmm. taking the slaves from Africa, bringing them over to the Caribbean, they're working on the plantations, picking up the molasses, taking it up to, um, taking it up to, and, and turning it into rum, and taking it up to the States, and there's this, then this big triangle, then, then going over and getting more slaves and coming down again, and that's another part of it. It's, again, it's a drug trade. 